Now that we've had an opportunity to look at Spring Boot and why it is a good fit for microservices and also what RESTful services are, we can go in and start thinking about our controller and our project in general. So first of all, let me clean up some things I added in my last demonstration that I don't need anymore. Secondly, just a quick overview of our project and where we are at this point. Enterprise application is a small file that just starts our application up in the Spring Boot way. Controller is the controller part of Model View Controller. This is going to handle things like REST endpoints and also any kind of event handlers that we need from our user interface. And then we also created a DTO using Lombok so that it generates the getters and setters for us. So a, a very early project that we've just started, this is a good place to start putting endpoints in. Now, I normally wouldn't put the endpoint in until I'm ready to do the entire feature, but nonetheless doing it at this early stage helps us to, number one, cement what we just learned and commit it to permanent memory, but number two, think about where we're going to go in this project going forward. So first of all, we have a request mapping and it does not have response entity or response body getting returned. It just has a string getting returned and that's going to return our start page. So that's fine, no problem. What I really want to think about here is the operations that we want to do with this specimen. And let's start an easy one. Let's, let's think about doing a git mapping and we know that we can do a git mapping like so. We can say at request mapping, and then value equals, and then that's the endpoint that we want to hit, so maybe specimen, comma, method equals request uh, method dot get. We put that annotation over a method, but that is admittedly a lot of typing. This line I'm just about to write gives us the exact same thing. We'll say git mapping, alt enter to import that, and then specimen. That's it. A lot easier that way. So we'll get rid of our first annotation and we'll just keep it at git mapping. Now, because we have it annotated to an endpoint, we can really call the method whatever we want. Let's say public, and this is going to be a get, so we're going to return a response entity. We could also get cute and do response body. Well, we might change this later. We'll keep it as response entity for now. Don't need to take any arguments, so open curly and close curly. Uh, let's call it fetch all specimens. Because you notice that we haven't given this a specimen identifier. We're just saying get me specimen, but we're not saying which one. So let's just return all specimens and we'll do alt enter to grab that response entity. And then I'll just return a dummy response entity. Okay, I just put in a dummy response there because we don't yet have any specimens to return or the framework to do it, but we're just marking out some endpoints so that we can think about what we want to create next. So that's going to return all. What if we want to return just one? Well, we can use that same specimen endpoint, but then we can do the little ID trick like this, where we know it's getting a single specimen. So let's change this method to fetch specimen by ID. Then we'll give it a string ID identifier. But let's also give this the at path variable annotation and associate it with ID. So I know that was a lot of typing, let's connect the dots. This is an endpoint and after the endpoint, the user can optionally specify a unique identifier of a specimen. If so, that will go right here between these slashes. The path variable is gonna take that value from the URL or from the endpoint essentially, and it's going to stuff it into this ID parameter that we have here, and then we can use that to go fetch a specific specimen. So, two different git mappings and a very similar endpoint, uh, which is fine. So, git means read data. Now, post means create something new. So, let's create our post. This one might be a little bit more involved. So, at post mapping, and again, you could do a request mapping for this and just say method equals post, but post mapping is a shortcut that'll make this go a little bit easier. Now, an important note, you notice the git mappings just have something in quotes in the parentheses. In post mapping, we're going to want to set several properties. So if we only set one property, it assumes that's the endpoint and it assigns it to a, an attribute called value. If we're going to add multiple properties, we have to specify 
which values go with which variables essentially. So I have to say value equals and then say in quotes slash specimen. And then after that, I'll say consumes equals and then application slash JSON. And that's a slash on the question mark key on the United States keyboard. And then comma and then produces equals and then also application slash JSON. And then we'll put this over public specimen, create specimen. Now, since we're creating something new, we need to receive that something new. So let's add a parameter variable here of type specimen, and the variable will be specimen. But how can that get given to us if this is an endpoint? Well, remember there's an annotation called request body. And that basically means you're going to be receiving the specimen as a JSON representation and then request body can use some naming conventions to parse through that JSON and populate this specimen object right here. So ideally what we would do is create the specimen and return the specimen. Uh, since we're just stubbing things out, I'm just going to return the same specimen that was passed in to us. Finally now, let's make a delete mapping endpoint. Delete, remember that's one of our HTTP actions, one that didn't get a whole lot of use until RESTful services came out, but now it does have a very good use, and that is we need to delete something. So let's give it an endpoint with an ID. We'll say slash specimen, slash ID, and then slash, and it basically means delete the specimen at this location, delete the specimen with this unique identifier. So we'll make a new method, public response entity, delete specimen. And then remember, we're going to need to do the path trick since that ID is passed to us in a path variable, just like this mapping up above. So no problem, at path variable, and we'll say ID, and then string ID. And a bit of a boilerplate return, as we saw before, is we're just stubbing out our endpoints. If you take a look at this, we've defined two fetch methods and then a post or a create new method and then a delete method. So we don't have any updates because right now I don't have a good use case for that. But nonetheless, we do have three out of the four CRUD operations. Create from the post, fetch from our two git mappings. One will fetch all, the other will fetch by ID. And then finally, delete. One other thing worth noticing here. If you look at each of these methods, they're all named uniquely and they're all named with a verb and then noun. So fetch all is the verb, specimens. Fetch, specimen by ID. Create, specimen, delete, specimen. So verb and noun that it's acting on. They're doing four very different things. But if you look at the endpoint, they're all essentially the same. So if I hit the endpoint specimen, how does it know which of these to go to? Well, there are two things it's going to look at. Number one, what is the endpoint? And does that endpoint contain an ID? If the endpoint contains an ID, it can narrow it down to one of these two that indicates it's expecting an ID. The other thing it's going to look for is the verb, get, post, delete, or one of the others. That essentially is a differentiator that determines which of these method calls is going to be called. So between the look of the endpoint with the endpoint name and an optional identifier and the verb, it's able to have a unique way to get to each one of these different methods we've created. Now I take a quick look to make sure I'm ready to debug and I realized one correction I need to make. Where I have these parameters, I need to enclose them in curly brackets to indicate that they are parameters. In other words, expect a variable to be passed in this location, not literally the letters ID. That's what the curly means. I just realized I forgot that. I'll go ahead and add it now and we'll be in good shape. Now let's test it out. I'm going to go to enterprise application and I'm going to simply choose debug enterprise application. And I have some breakpoints that are set in each of these methods that we've made. Meanwhile, I'm going to go out to Postman and I'm going to go ahead and download that app and install it. Postman's installed, so from here we'll sign in. 
Now I've installed Postman brand new on this virtual machine, but since I'm signing in with an account that I have used previously, we see all of my previous requests are here. We will try each of these endpoints along with the appropriate HTTP action. So notice for Git mapping, we actually have two different endpoints, one that does not take an ID and one that does take an ID. Then we have post mapping, which also has certain content type requirements and also delete mapping. Let's test each one of these at a time. We go to Postman and click on the plus up here to get a new tab. And now I'm going to simply put in the URL for our first Git endpoint, which is specimen without an ID. And notice we have Git set over here. Now I set a breakpoint in each of those methods so that we can see which one gets called each time. So Git, send, IntelliJ lights up orange, which means the breakpoint hit. And take a look, we, we have hit this Git mapping with just the plain old specimen endpoint. I'll go ahead and choose F9 and let that continue. Let's go back to Postman now and let's hit the endpoint that's expecting a parameter. So I'll put in slash 20 and then slash. And it is important that we end that with a slash to indicate that we're filling that second term of our endpoint, which is essentially the, the parameter. So I choose send. Once again, idea lights up orange. We go back over and take a look at where the breakpoint hit this time. This time it hit in Git mapping, but specifically the endpoint that has the ID notation. So we choose F9 and continue there. Now the post mapping is a little bit trickier. We just have to hit the specimen endpoint, but we do have to give it a content type of application JSON. So for postman, we go to post. And we don't need that identifier because it's just hitting the specimen endpoint. Now you notice I'm on the headers tab. If you're not there, you can simply click here to find it. And it helps us out here because we're not the first ones to do this. So note as I start typing content type, it auto completes. And then I can say application. And once again, it's going to auto complete for me here. Application JSON. Now, one other trick about post in particular is that it's actually expecting data because it's going to populate our specimen DTO with that data. So this gets a little tricky because we need to pass in some JSON data. Well, luckily I've done this before in a previous video and luckily I did that in Postman, even though it was on a different computer, uh, I still have it here in my Postman collection of prior calls in my history. So I can just go grab this JSON and if you don't have this, you could just type it out or I can provide it for you. It's fairly straightforward, just a few lines, but nonetheless, paste and send and let's see what breakpoint gets hit this time. And sure enough, it's the post mapping. And if I mouse over specimen, or if you look to your right, you can see plant ID 83, specimen ID 1002, latitude, longitude, description. Just remember one or two details there. And as we go back, these should look familiar because it essentially created the specimen with this nugget of JSON. So I choose F9, let that go. At this point, we've seen three out of the four calls that we have mapped here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the fourth. The fourth one is our delete endpoint. And since we're deleting a specific specimen, this is one that takes an ID. So I'll go ahead and put uh, 13. I've also removed that application JSON content type. Don't think it would hurt us, but just to clean things up, I remove that. I choose send. And we see once again, idea is lighting up. And sure enough, you notice we're hitting the delete mapping. So you can see here that we have four methods that are essentially the same endpoint or the same endpoint with simply a unique identifier on the end. And these methods are getting called based on the HTTP action that was used. Now, what if we try something irrelevant? What if we try to call delete, but we do not pass an identifier in? it's gonna give us back a 405, method not allowed. Similarly, what if we call the put method, but we don't have the right content type? Because remember, I turned that off, I left that disabled. We hit send, and we see once again, 405, method not allowed. So you see that Postman lets us not only see what happens with these HTTP actions, but it also shows us the HTTP status that comes back. And these are two of the fundamental concepts of microservices. So you see here, it's not just the endpoint, but also the HTTP actions that decide which method gets called. This is just the start. A whole lot more we're going to build onto it. I hope this video was helpful for you, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.